I got chased by a bear. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So okay. just riding along, That's minding okay. my own business. And as sometimes dogs do, they kind of run after your car or they run after you, you know, and they're chomping at your heels. There's a brown bear running after the yeah. bike. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Coming in, in. yeah. Flex. Hi. I'm Ben from townandtourist.com. In this video, I'm going to be chatting with Gordon Wilson, an incredible individual who's done a tremendous traveling achievement. He's rode 48 states in just 48 days on an epic motorcycle road trip. Let's dive in. The first question on, I think, everyone's mind has to be, what was the motivation behind taking such an epic adventure? Uh... For me, it was very much the personal challenge. That's what came first. Uh, pushing my boundaries, pushing myself physically, pushing myself mentally, and of course, the adventure. Uh, it's what it's all about. Sounds like an amazing adventure, to be fair. So, talk me through the trip. The trip was to be started in Orlando. Yeah. Uh, and I had to think very carefully because of the dynamics of weather, yeah. the dynamics of uh, the route, yeah. uh, what way I needed to do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, starting in Florida, yeah. heading up the East Coast, getting across the top through the Glacier National Parks, getting back to Orlando uh, would probably, hopefully, take account of the changing seasons because yeah. I actually rode through changing, changing seasons yeah. and where I could try and avoid the uh, the epic storms and the uh, hurricanes and the okay. typhoons, which I nearly did, but not so, totally. So you said about the seasonal change. So yeah. what, what time of year did you do the trip? I uh, started the trip on the 1st of August, which just August. happened to be my birthday. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, that's the summer, Florida, really, yeah. really hot, really, really warm. So the idea was to head north, to yeah. cool down, to get away from yeah. it all, yeah? <laughs> so gradually working up the East Coast, yeah. went through to the Blue Ridge Mountains, uh, up to Maine at the top. By yeah. then, I'm cool. Yeah. I'm relaxed. Yeah, uh, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then sort of uh, the, uh, the, the, southern, the northern states, mm. um, the weather was turning. Yeah. So when I was in Glacier National Park, yeah. uh, we had frost. I literally had to clean the frost off the saddle of the bike. Uh, my hands were frozen and yeah. then I was heading south yeah. and I was heading towards the Nevadas of this world and yeah. again the searing heat. Yeah. but getting back to Orlando later on when the weather yeah. had cooled down. Started in Florida. Started in Florida, yeah. You just get this correct, you've gone up the east coast. Yeah. Through the... Under the Great Lakes. Yeah, under the Great Lakes across by the Canadian border, Niagara Falls. Past Niagara Falls. Yeah. So Niagara Falls comes first, then the Great Lakes, yeah. then through um, Milwaukee, yeah. cut across the top through to Montana, yeah. then head generally south. I didn't have enough time to go to the Pacific Coast. Yeah. I kind of ran out of time. Too many typhoons going on, yeah. trying to avoid and dodge wow. all of the weather. Yeah. That would have been uh, crazy. Then headed down through uh, past Salt Lake City, yeah. uh, into Nevada, yeah. Las Vegas, and then I cut my way across. Yeah. Great stuff. So obviously it's a diverse range of states you've been through. Yeah. There. yeah. And obviously you've covered a lot of um, miles. What was it? Ten thousand miles? Uh, ten and a half thousand miles in ten, total. Ten yeah. and a half thousand yeah, miles. Yeah. Yeah. And that was ranging on a daily basis. Yeah. The average would have been. Uh, 300, 350 yeah. each and every day wow. where uh, I needed to ride. I had occasions yeah. where the bike was being serviced yeah. or had built in some kind of rest days yeah. to 610 miles on the longest and the most challenging wow. day of miles. my life. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. It was that crazy. It was crazy. So how, how was that for you physically in terms of you're on the bike, you're doing 610 miles how many hours is that are you driving a day well you know you can average easily 60 mile an hour yeah so you know you're talking 10 11 12 hour plus so that day was 12, a 12 hours that was a 12 hour wow. plus day and probably too much to be honest yeah so uh i uh i, I remember getting to 480 miles yeah. thinking really i should look for somewhere to stay, yeah. thought I found somewhere to stay, and the town was shut, closed, gone. 
ghost town. Ghost town. Ghost town. Uh, thought because I wasn't using a sat nav or yeah. anything, kind of using maps and yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit of local knowledge. I thought, uh, right, okay, the next town must be 20 miles. Yeah. Got on the interstate, 120 miles. Wow. So there was the 610 yeah. miles. Ended up in a place called Billings in Montana. Billings, yeah. Uh, Billings, yeah. And uh, just thought, never again. Never, not never, good. Uh, Didn't enjoy it. Uh, um, Two thirds of it, but then I, I I finished the ride with the biggest storm I've ever I've ever oh, ridden okay. through. Yeah, literally, it was a case of uh, right. Okay, now uh, where do I die? Do I die on the bike <laughs> in the storm, or do I die wow. at the side of the road, wow. cowering from the storm? Yeah. And I decided to get on the bike and try and ride through it. It was wow. an unbelievable experience. To be, to be fair, that must have been just actually terrifying because you're there you're thinking there's a storm here i'm riding no one sort of knows that i'm here yeah. in terms of i can be helped yeah and you're thinking where do i die I, I i i could see this black curtain yeah. approaching me and i was doing say 60 65 it must have been doing 60 65 yeah. and we sort of hit each other at about 120 mile an yeah. hour yeah. and i went from uh, full visibility to no visibility in yeah. 60 seconds wow managed to feather the the bike to the roadside yeah. interstate trucks going past me i was getting blown over trying to get yeah. the wetsuit on and that's when i said do i die here or do i get on the bike wow. and i thought i'd just get on the bike and i just had yeah. to ride through you it. have to keep riding but wow challenging but seriously you know no. i know i'm alive that, that, you know yeah, i know it. i'm alive and you know i mean that's what you the whole it. thing you made it that's what the whole thing of yeah. you know riding bikes yeah. uh, pushing your boundaries having a bit of an adventure yeah and all of those things you can do certainly when you're in yeah. the us yeah well, well that that freedom of riding a bike yeah. across 48 states in 48 days and yeah. that experience and adventure comes yeah. with a risk yeah yeah and it comes with a like a terrifying risk like how were you how is your family about um the journey you uh my wife's really understanding yeah, yeah. and uh the arrangement was she needed to be able to see where i could be at any one time so yeah. i i was able to use a tracking system yeah, yeah so yeah. uh they could see where i was at any particular time whether yeah. i was traveling where i was staying uh, and uh, that, that's how that, that's how I managed that to gave, get away. That gave her peace of mind. Yeah. So she could be like, okay, I know where he is now. He's in this state. He's yeah. in this place. Yeah. He's traveling. He's yeah. doing this. So she could relax and be like, okay, I yeah. don't know. He's not just yeah. disappeared off the planet. Yeah. yeah. I know where yeah. he is. I mean, I was really determined not to make this prescriptive. Yeah. So I put an awful lot of time and effort into planning this and pulling this yeah, together. Yeah. But literally on the day I put myself on the bike, I never knew where I was going. Really? I, I knew I was well, going in that direction. I knew yeah. the logical step was yeah. to be in that state, yeah. then that state, yeah. then that state. Uh, but that was it, you know, yeah. and every day it was, you know, riding, getting the obligatory 300 miles or so done, thinking about where I might stay, pulling into a town, riding through the town, get an idea of motels and various other things and then turn up at the desk put on my best british accent and wow. say how about do me a deal you yeah, know you, yeah. and nine times out of ten they would and they were great and yeah. even sort of shared the experience of my ride on their social media it was an unbelievable experience ben absolutely unbelievable so, so did you tell the motel um clark you said okay this is the trip i'm doing yeah and yeah how, how was their response to that you're, you're mad. <laughs> you're mad. <laughs> you're mad. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, I've never been out of state and you're yeah. doing 48 states. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, generally. And, you know, people were happy to share the experience. Yeah. And what I found, especially in the US, uh, that uh, the more I was sharing and the more the journey was starting to unfold, the more people were coming on board and sharing my story. So it was being shared by Harley Davidson USA, it was being shared by Eagle Rider USA, not just in the States, but outside the States as well. Getting messages on Facebook through yeah. the, the, the event page. Come and stay with me, you know, I'm a rider. I can show you some uh, hospitality, you know, the typical kind of motorcycle family that you get globally, but especially in the US. Yeah, so, so there's a lot of 
support from the motorcycling community. Yeah. Obviously Harley Davidson, they sponsored the trip, was it? Uh, Leeds Harley Davidson, Gates at Harley Davidson as a franchise de yes. dealership. Yeah, they've been great. They were lead sponsors. Uh, and uh, I was able to do some really good work with the Eagle Rider as well, who are the, the rental company. So they really helped a lot. Uh, helped me to uh, get a good rental bike at a good price gave me lots of other incentives as well just to make sure that the ride was going to go across uh, you know uh, as it was unsupported I just yeah. needed to know that I had backup should something go wrong yeah. and they were great at that so when you say unsupported you mean obviously you're just a sole rider you're riding on the bike you haven't got extra cars behind you like a following car no bag up van no yeah, car no bag van right. literally i got on the bike and i went and that was yeah. it and the only people i could talk to were people who i made friendships with mm. so in the evenings it would be you know pulling up into a motel finding somewhere to sit to eat yeah. uh, and just chatting to people and just yeah. saying well you know i'm going on to wherever next yeah. and they would say oh you know try this road keep off the interstate try and do this place this is an amazing place yeah. and that sort of informed my yeah. journey throughout i love that so it's you really you took a local approach to travel exactly you didn't just say okay I'm going to just plan it all in advance. You sort of said, OK, I'm going to speak to the local people. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. actually say, OK, which way do I go? What's the best route? Should I avoid this road? Should yeah. I take this road? I had a map of the US. That was it. It would yeah. go out on the bed at night and I would look and say, OK, yeah, roughly. Yeah. I know where I'm going. Uh, yeah, no sat nav. I no really, sat nav. I really wow. didn't want to have anybody talking to me or telling me where I need to go, how I need to do it. Uh, wow. It was, you know, an adventure. See, see that to me, just no sat nav is astonishing, especially yeah. these days. Like most people I know, and including myself, is people become very lazy, especially with yeah. directions. Yeah. And you'll go in the car, you're driving ten minutes up the road. It's a regular road route you do. Yeah. And you'll still say, okay, I'll use a sat nav. Yeah. I'll yeah. use it just in case. I'll use a sat nav. Yeah. And you've just completely flipped that on its head and exactly. gone, well, actually, yeah. I'm going to go old school exactly or yeah speaking to the locals no sat nav map and i'm just going to travel and i'm just yeah. going to literally just hit the road and yeah. that's to me that's ultimate freedom it is honestly and yeah. you know uh if you don't know where you're going you can't yeah. get lost so you know uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know I, I i regularly sort of found myself not going around in circles but thinking my god this isn't as easy as i thought yeah but it was the challenge you know and yeah. i'd put a lot of time into my physical and mental preparation for yeah. this so you know i don't think there was ever one occasion on any of those days where i really thought i'd bitten off more than i could chew wow. um but you know yeah the That's amazing yeah, yeah yeah what type of mental and physical preparation did you do uh i did a lot of physical build up a lot of gym work a lot of running uh really prepared myself with core yeah. strength so riding a bike you know you're sitting there you're sitting there for long periods of time yeah. you do need a lot of core strength especially sort of uh uh, riding a big motorcycle like a Harley Davidson. Uh, so uh, I do tend to think I look after myself. So I knew yeah. I was prepared physically uh, and mentally as well. Mm. You know, being on your own, being able to self motivate, yeah. you know, being able to inspire and yeah. push the boundaries yeah. of your own particular mental kind mm. of ability. Uh, and uh, yep, yeah, I, I, I found the first part of the journey, the first, say, uh, third of the journey. A little bit challenging because I would occasionally look at my map and I would think, right, okay, I'm a little bit tired and I'm a, I've done X, Y, and Z, and right, okay, and I'm only there, and I've still got 38 days to go, and I've still <laughs> got to do all of this as well. And because I had really been on roads I'd never ridden before, uh, it was quite a challenge. Yeah, extra challenge. There. Yeah, yeah. So you just thinking okay was, was there any days where you ever felt like just giving up no no every every nine times out of ten i probably would have been happy to get off the bike yeah because you know you just either needed to rest you needed to swim you need to do something so you know quite often i'd be happy to get off the bike yeah not that i'd had enough it was just time to get off yeah uh, and every morning i could not wait to get back on the bike I you know that. and some of yeah. them were really early morning starts so you arrive you're still compensating for the time difference mm. you're waking up early 
and then some mornings I'm up, not even had my breakfast, I'm on the bike, six o'clock. I've done a couple of hundred miles before people are even getting out of bed. So wow. you're riding and you know, and the sun is rising, it's cool, it's, mm. it's just surreal, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it helps being in such a beautiful country like exactly. in such a diverse country. Yeah. Did the diversity of America keep it interesting? All the time, yeah. Different yeah. states. Yeah. Every state I found was dif uh, different. Mm. Uh, you know, could I, could I say I had a favorite state? It would be, it would be difficult. Uh, but that was the, the interesting thing, you know, 48 days, it was 48 different rides. You know, I never came back to the place I started from. Every day was, wow, God, you know, yeah. I've never seen that before or I've never been challenged like that before. Yeah. And, you know, every view from a motorcycle saddle is different. You know, it's not like driving a car. It's not like sitting on a train. You know, you're literally feeling the bike. You're sharing the experience with the bike. You're able to look around and, you know, many days I'd be riding for two, three, four hours and not see another soul. Wow. Unbelievable. That's yeah. amazing. With a bike, you obviously you're more in touch with the roads. You can feel the roads more. You can yeah. feel the drive more. Yeah. Was there a favourite road you had, a favourite route? Uh, I've probably the ride to the Grand Canyon. So uh, I approached the Grand Canyon from the south. Uh, and uh, I spent most of the early morning on the south rim of the Grand Canyon. And then the ride from the south rim of the uh, canyon leads you into Utah, Utah to Monument Valley. And then eventually I wanted to go through Monument Valley and pop out at the other end, actually into Colorado. Uh, and uh, that was something I could do day after day yeah. after day. You've gone from the, the Grand Canyon the sunrise, the clouds, the shadows, to the ride through Monument Valley. It's just unbelievable, yeah. so yeah. So describe to me the scenery on that journey. So you're leaving the, the south rim of the Grand Canyon, so the rim's gonna be on your left-hand side. Mm. Uh, you know, the roads are so quiet and so safe mm. that you can literally take your eye off the road and you just watch the, the canyon yeah. unfolding before you. Yeah. Uh, occasionally stopping, taking pictures of your bike, uh, pleading with somebody because I'm on my own, pleading yeah. with somebody, could you take my photograph with my yeah. bike? Uh, and then yeah. you, uh, you drop down from the canyon because the canyon's very high, it's about a mile high. That's how you can get the depth, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you drop gradually down from the rim uh, and you start to head uh, east towards Utah and then the, uh, the trees fall away you start to get the desert, you start to get the heat, you start to get the long, straight, iconic roads with the, uh, the stacks, yeah. which you are familiar with, with Monument Valley. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then gradually you start to work your way into the valley itself, you know, home of all of the big iconic westerns that we see on yeah. the TV. Uh, and, you know, you've got a cathedral stack on one side and another stack on the other side, and you're just riding this beautiful motorcycle just working your way through, feeling the heat on your back, still continuing to head in an easterly direction till you can just start to see the signs for Colorado. And then it all changes again. You start to get a bit of elevation, you start to get a bit of forestation. And before you know you are, you're in an alpine resort of, uh, in, in Colorado, that's unbelievable. It, yeah. Hot springs. Hot springs, yeah, 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 it, yeah, 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 going skiing. No, so, yeah, it's nice, yeah. Now that, so would you recommend that route is so if someone's thinking of doing a road trip across the USA, yeah, yeah. maybe not one as epic as yours, but yeah. maybe a shorter one. Would you recommend that route? Up I, there to I, drive I yeah, yeah, definitely. I road? well, it's a personal thing. I would always probably think about doing uh, a, a route in and around the canyon. Yeah. You can ride right the way around the canyon. You can take another national parks. You yeah. can do Bryce. You can do Zion. Uh, you can do uh, the Grand Canyon itself. So something like flying into Phoenix is great. You can come up through Sedona. You can do Flagstaff. You can get a bit of Route 66. You can go from the South Rim. You can go around to the North Rim. Totally different. Uh, you can do Zion, Bryce. You can cut then back down to Vegas. You can come back down through the Hoover Dam. You know, uh, and you can do that easily in about 10, 10 days, two weeks, yeah. giving you time to, to sample all of those things. Nice. So that, that should be on everyone's bucket list then. That, exactly. That route. And you can even go that route from LA. You can. You can go from LA, yeah. Hoover Dam, Grand Canyon, Vegas, yeah. 
and go back around. Then you could even, if you wanted to go up to Yosemite. Yeah. Did you go through Yosemite, that area? No. No, you no, didn't go Yosemite. No, we, uh, we did Yellowstone, or I did Yellowstone. Yellow. Me and the bike did Yellowstone. Yeah, bike and did that's, Yellowstone. that was one of the amazing sort of experiences yeah. as well. So uh, I came into Yellowstone on the East Gate. Yeah. Uh, up something called the Bear Tooth Pass. Bear Tooth Pass so yeah. if you uh, if you look at any of the the big bike ride sites or even touring sites, one of the big passes to do was the Bear Tooth Pass. Yeah. So uh, working my way gradually up the Bear Tooth Pass till you get to such an elevation that you're riding with snow on either side of you, and then you drop down into the uh, East Gate of Yellowstone National Park, uh, international into the national park. Uh, two amazing things happen. One was I got chased by a bear. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So okay. just riding along, That's minding my own business. And as sometimes dogs do, they kind of run after your car or they run after you, you know, and they're chomping at your heels. There's a brown bear running after the bike. Wow. A bit of an adolescent, <laughs> but it still was a, a nifty, a nifty quick bear. Quack. And then further on, all the traffic had stopped and uh, it was to allow bison to cross the road. So uh, I'm watching the bison crossing the road. Everybody else is in the car. Everybody winds the windows up. I'm sitting on the bike thinking, right, OK, what do I do? The bison decided he didn't want to cross the road. He decided he want to come down the road. And as close as you are to me, this bison, past me. The close shave there. Uh, unbelievable. So, you know, I'm sitting on the bike, I'm as high as I am now, and his eye was up here. This bull bison was grazing just feet from visitors at Yellowstone when it suddenly charged. The video shows two people running before a nine-year-old Florida girl was tossed high into the air before the video abruptly ends. That, yeah. must have been, that must have been terrifying. Terrifying, but what could yeah. I do, yeah. Especially like, we're from the UK. Yeah. We don't see bears, bison, no. this type of wildlife. Unbelievable. Yeah. Where should you see in the UK is a fox, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe a loose yeah. dog. Yeah. That's, that's all you yeah. see in the UK, yeah. but an actual bear and <laughs> a bison. A bear and a bison on the same day. That's so that's where yeah. that's when I started to be very careful about the messages I would say and send to my wife. Yeah. So it was uh, had a great day. Uh, got chased by a bear and yeah. nearly got kind of run over by a bison. Well, maybe it's not. I told her all when I came. Yeah, back. yeah, yeah. She'd be like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's <it's> with a bear? <laughs> no, that's 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 crazy. To yeah. Be fair. Yeah. You, Tale of the Dragon, did you did you hit that road? Tale of the Dragon did the road, yeah, yes. did the ride twice. So how, how um, was that? Um, to be honest, not as daunting as everybody makes it yeah. out to be. It's 21 miles down and it's 21 miles up, and I think there's something like 50 bends on it. Uh, so uh, as you do, you turn up to the beginning of the ride. It's all set up. There's cafes and various mm. other things petrol stations, guys there with the cameras ready to take and capture a shot and sell them to you later on. And uh, apart from everybody else who was pushing their boundaries, mm. it's, a, it's a great and interesting ride. Yeah. Uh, twists and turns as you head down uh, uh, and lots of evidence of people who didn't make it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on, in both directions, either side. Uh, but if you're sensible and you take your time and, you know, I needed to, because yeah. constantly I kept saying to myself, right, okay, so if I come off, it's not as easy to resolve yeah. here as it would be at home. Yeah. You know, there's me, there's the bike, there's the hospital, there's all sorts of things that's yeah. getting home. So I, I, I was careful, uh, you know, and... Uh, you had a lot on the line. You're at all, the side Every of the day, yeah, 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 every day. You, you took on this epic challenge. Yeah. So you pushing your boundaries on Taylor the Dragon to to try and win an ego battle no. with a guy in a Suzuki next year yeah. is, is definitely not, not and the that right was, idea. And that was only about uh, sixth or seventh day into the ride, so it was oh, quite well, early, on, yeah, yeah, early so, on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, from the tail of the dragon, uh, it was then the Blue Ridge Mountain Highway yeah, after that. Blue Ridge Parkway. So uh, that was a stunning and unbelievable experience yeah. as well. Um, you know, every every other day there was something which took my breath mm. away, and that's what really just inspired me to keep going. Yeah. You know, it was 48, 48 days, but it was really 48 separate adventures, yeah. each and every one of them being different. Mm. Like, would you say if it was the same distance, 10 and a half thousand miles, but there wasn't the array of diverse landscapes, it would have been more challenging? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And the scenery 
motivated you and kept you going? Everything was different, yeah. You know, there were days that were quite challenging. There were days when uh, I needed to take a bit of a detour because I didn't really fancy riding through New York City. Yeah. So, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, right, okay. Smart move. Yeah, and it was a 300 mile diversion. Yeah. So that's the equivalent where I come from, Newcastle, yeah. riding down to the south coast in Brighton. Yeah. Just to get out the way of avoiding going through New York. Yeah. Um, and I think it was the right call. Mm. You know, the, the logistics are, are quite challenging. So, you know, some of the, the states logically follow each other. Mm. You come out of one and you go into another. But some states you had to think about, well, if I need to be in that particular state to get the other states, I need to literally ride in the opposite direction yeah. for a day to come back another day to wow. then get on with a ride. And for that, it's quite men mentally yeah. challenging. So, you know, I'm looking forward maybe to getting it done. You know, there was a yeah. bit of pressure on me in the sense that not only was I doing this for my own personal challenge, I was trying to raise awareness for a charity, yeah. the Great North Air Ambulance, so I didn't want to fail. Yeah. So, you know, uh, when all of a sudden I'm riding for a full day in the wrong direction, yeah, it's, you have yeah. to feel that, what am I? Is it worth it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, you know, then just turn the bike round and then head back to look yeah. virtually where I started two days earlier yeah. to then carry on with the ride. See, the scale of a journey like that, especially when you're in such a short time constraint, yeah. like 48 states for 48 days. Yeah. And then if you have to take a whole day out to do a detour, yeah. Yeah. it's, yeah, and so mentally, especially with no, no satellite navigation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like most people, they do a 10 minute detour out yeah. of the city centre and they yeah. question themselves, is, did I make the right turning? And, and uh, to be honest, yeah. I think probably, it probably was more efficient, and probably more effective doing it the way I was doing it, rather than riding or relying on, uh, you know, some social media input because you do hear some horrendous stories of being taken yeah. well out of your, well out of your way. Um, but uh, for me, that was the challenge. You know, literally, that was the challenge. Yeah. Well, you, one thing I will say is you've made it look easy. Like, it's not an easy feat and you've made it look easy. Like, even the way you casually explain, oh, I just took a left at Utah, I took a left at Florida. Like, you make it sound so easy and so simple. And to a lot of people who just see media, and obviously even looking at the technical aspects of the 10,500 miles, yeah. it's an amazing feat to be able to travel such a distance, yeah. 48 days, 48 states, in such a casual manner, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm. So let's talk about the air ambulance. Okay. What what type of services do they do, and, and like how, how are they funded normally? So the air ambulance uh, that, uh, I was trying to help with something, uh, it's, an, it's a charity called the Great North Air Ambulance yeah. uh, and uh, they provide critical emergency care for extreme uh, and uh, uh, extreme incidents. Yeah. So that could be anything from a road crash, motorcycles, cars to industrial okay. kind of events. Uh, and surprisingly they're a charity along with all of the other air ambulances in the UK. So uh, they survive purely on donations, the yeah. donations of the people they serve. So uh, whatever I could do just to make people aware that this is a charity uh, and that uh, they purely rely solely on donations, you know, just trying to help to raise funds, but also to raise awareness about this was part yeah. of the, the the purpose of the ride. Yeah. Uh, and they do an amazing job, and daily they're out, you know, literally saving lives. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Like the fact that you've done such an epic journey to help such a good cause as well. Yeah, and f you know, for motorcyclists, the air ambulance is a big, mm. a, a big thing. You know, uh, quite often you'll see, especially in the summer loads of articles in newspapers, air ambulance was called out, motorcyclists yeah. came off and you know they're only ever called out if it's a life and death situation yeah. where an ambulance would get there too late, an ambulance wouldn't be able to get them back in time and you know these guys who are volunteers uh, themselves do perform life-saving techniques at the roadside yeah. and uh, if they weren't there people would have lost their lives for sure. Yeah, so the, really they're like a guardian angel for Definitely. motorcyclists yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the north of England. Yeah, yeah, motorcyclists, but it, it does, it, it sort of, it, it sort of, 
bikers, motorcyclists, bikers kind of understand the need for the air ambulance, mm. but a lot of other people don't realise the yeah. depth of the work that they do. So yeah, it is critical life-saving care mm. at the roadside, but it literally could be to getting uh, a baby that's born in one hospital yeah. who's got a, 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 a life-threatening uh, condition and the ambulance couldn't get them to the only hospital that's going to save their life. Yeah. The air ambulance can be there in minutes, can get them to another hospital within another few minutes. And again, that's the difference. Wow, that's amazing. So, so how much did you raise for the charity? Uh, my target was £10,000 and I'm just short of £10,000 at the 10, moment. 000. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still doing talks. I'm still going yeah. and trying to sort of raise awareness, yeah. rattling tins and yeah. buckets and things like that. So hopefully, you know, I'll hit my target, but I'll continue yeah. To try and help the air yeah. ambulance as best well, I can. Well, I'll leave a link on this video below, so if anyone wants to donate, they yeah, can, they can donate as Fantastic. well. Fantastic, so thanks, help, Ben. That should help to fund it. Oops, if please. I could think any of the things that I've done whilst I was there on this ride would inspire anybody or yeah. empower anybody to get out there and do it, yeah. go for it. It can be done. It should be done. If you've got the opportunity to do it, do it yeah. and go for it. Nice. That's it nice thought for everyone to just get out there and just take an adventure because yeah. you've got one life you've got yeah. one life to live yeah so don't overthink it don't over plan it just be smart be flexible and just hit the road and just enjoy your life and exactly you'll have a great experience like yeah. you did nice chatting anyway and you too ben nice yeah. to have met you nice thank chat. you